your latest LSA entry, what was your thinking for it? And obviously it's a bit of a departure from the usual RANS norm. It, it could be said that uh, in the fact that it's all metal. Uh, when we set down to design this plane, we had a couple of distinct goals in mind. We wanted to be in the middle of the road as possible. In other words, we wanted to look like a plane, feel like a plane, smell like a plane, and be an airplane. It's also one of the first new designs since the rule went into effect that was designed totally from the ground up and on U.S. soil, which we feel significant because there actually has not been any U.S. entries in that market. Uh, there has been some other U.S. planes, but they're all derivative designs like, say, Cubs and previous designs that have been turned into SLSAs. But the philosophy behind it was is to be able to build it mostly on computer and uh, take all the handiwork out of it so we can get decent uh, production times, decent repeatability, have very consistent quality. And the plane itself, simple, rugged, uh, understandable, identifiable as a general aviation aircraft. So we kind of summarize it, it's a little airplane with a big airplane feel. It has big airplane stability, but little airplane breakout forces and uh, good acceleration on takeoff, good uh, spirited type of performance. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. What's the market responding like at this point? Uh, we're covered up with orders for kits, and this is our first show since we got certification, and we're testing the waters on how big we have to size the factory or how serious we have to get about building copies of it ready to fly. Uh, we're, response is too early to tell right now, but we'll, we'll walk away with some orders. I hate to put you kind of on the spot here, but what's, what's a certified, so to speak, 19 probably going to cost? What's the availability going to be like? And more important to you, was uh, I have to imagine at this point that you built this to be produced. So what have you done as far as economies of scale for production? Uh, good question. We've got this aircraft we're looking at here is not a prototype, very significant development. We skipped the prototype process, saving tons of money. Everything on this plane's made from production tooling. So when this flew, it, it proofed the production. Uh, our price is 110 for analog and 117 for digital. Uh, the production is going like this. We've got 12 months that we want to ramp up to be building one a week, and then a few months after that we hope to be about one and a half, maybe two. Uh, it's going to take us 12 months to get there. In the meantime, we're building a sampling of aircraft to organize the QA systems and uh, the protocols in the factory. Was it much of a, uh, a change for you to start thinking all metal? Uh, no. it. It's something we always wanted to do, and we've done a, a lot of metal work. If you look at our aircraft, uh, the S-12 was all metal with the exception of some uh, fabric covering on the wing and tail. The Pursuit was pretty much a half and half. The S-16 was uh, composite and metal. So it's not something we're unfamiliar with, and, and I think we have quite a bit of finesse with it. The hardest part about building a metal airplane is a fuselage, and we've done that with things like the S-18 full enclosure, the S-12 full enclosures. Those have been complicated metal structures, and so to do the whole airplane of metal is really kind of pleasant. And it's kind of, you know, we like the homogenized aspect of it because uh, purchasing's easier, and uh, the whole protocol seems to work for us. It's a good fit. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. 
There's a lot of criticism of the market right now in that, one, it's either too foreign, too expensive, or not really being built for what people want to buy at this stage of the game. If you would, could you con maybe comment a little bit about that externally and then how you feel you fit in those parameters? Well, I think the market is convoluted, and I think it's too unstandardized. I, you know, the old days of GA, you'd get in a Cherokee, a Cessna, uh, or a Piper Cessna Beach, and everything was familiar enough that you could survive the experience, and you wouldn't need specific types or, uh, type checkouts. Uh, the, the foreign thing bothers us as U.S. manufacturers because there's no uh, barriers to get those uh, planes in here. Like going the other way, there's large barriers, and there will continue to be because the Europeans are smarter than us. They say, well, if you want to bring your products here, you're going to pay. Right. Uh, the Americans are like, yeah, just throw it on the dock. Yeah. So uh, that opens up a lot of doors and a lot of question marks when those doors are open for a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, I was talking to one who will remain unnamed individual who's importing a plane made in some country, and I asked him, all these particular questions about how he complied to the standards that he didn't know. Right. And that's pretty typical of the European uh, venue. And if you know the European venue and how complicated their infrastructure is for rulemaking and running regulations, it's very convoluted and not clear on how well uh, made these planes or how, how their feet are held to the fire. Over here, our feet are going to be held to the fire because the FAA will step in at some point somehow and uh, mandatory audits and outs mandatory outside audits and things like that, all of which I think is great. I am a proponent of uh, having the FAA involved from the very beginning. I thought it was ridiculous. It was like, I'm going to go out and invest millions of dollars in a product and not have some other government entity or some sort of outside body to validate me. That's kind of crazy. Hmm. So that's kind of my view on it.